Hello, everybody. We have Darlene Lancer talking to me on Zoom today, and she is the author of Dating, Loving, and Leaving a Narcissist. And the title alone is intriguing. <laughs> uh, I had so many questions about it because in my research, I found so many victims slash survivors that had a lot of danger. You know, they used the word danger in there. And I wanted to see uh, what you had to say about that and and tell me all about your book as well. Oh, thank you. Well, you know, on the internet, you only hear about the worst case scenarios. And a lot of writers are talking about, they're really describing a malignant narcissist or a sociopathic narcissist, and they're the most dangerous types of all. But there are other people that are uh, living and married to narcissists, and their symptoms are more mild. And sometimes, often, they contact me, and they want to know how to stay in the relationship. So there's, even if you want to leave, your self-esteem is usually so beaten down, and your autonomy and sense of individuality and self-worth is gets degraded living with someone who has to be the most important person in the world and ignore your needs, who's not empathetic. And whether you want to change the balance of power in the relationship which is what I write about, is like how to do that. Or if you want to leave, you have to take the same steps to rebuild your confidence and start taking back your power. Uh, that means building your self-worth, setting boundaries, having interests outside the relationship. And uh, there are different types of narcissists. I mentioned, you know, malignant narcissists. And mostly people hear about the grandiose narcissists they're the ones that are in the public eye often in entertainment and uh, in the military in politics and people don't notice or uh, they may not be aware of the covert narcissists they're more inhibited inhibited and that's what your film is about right covert narcissists yeah it is so indeed. they can be dangerous because not because their behavior is more threatening, but because they can be harder to notice. Because they, uh, they're they not so, they can be charming too, but they're not usually seeking the attention and to be this uh, center of everyone's uh, eye, like a grandiose narcissist. That's the exhibitionist. But the covert narcissist is more inhibited. It's lesser known. They're also referred to as the inhibited or closet or vulnerable narcissist because they come across as more vulnerable. They may be more open, more anxious, shy, uh, you know, instead of bragging about themselves, they feel like they're misunderstood, mistreated. They play on your sympathies and but they can be just as obnoxious. Um, and shameless and they have the same traits that narcissist personality narcissistic personality disorder requires so they lack empathy they think they're special uh, they in, want admiration they have a sense of entitlement so those are some core features so you know you had mentioned um that you had people talking to you about wanting to stay in the marriage or stay in the relationship. Um, I, the, the term gray rocking came up in my mind. And is that a tool? Well, it's interesting. I wrote a blog called the, you know, the payoff and the price of gray rocking. So if you do that and what that means for those of you, listeners who don't know, it's like, you just, you don't give any feedback. The narcissist wants attention and admiration, or they want to engage you in an argument, and that's all for power. That's their primary motive, because that's how they keep safe. It's not necessarily just to um, control you, which they want to do, but it's because they feel so insecure that they have to be in control and they have to have power. So uh, rather than argue with them, which I don't recommend, but just not give them any just yes or no answers. And uh, don't even try to dress up for them or don't try to please them. Don't try to get their attention. So you want to be gray, you know, and like a rock. Show no expression and emotion. So 
that can give you some freedom from conflict and but there is a, a cost and a risk and that is they'll look outside the relationship for that so if you want to stay in the relationship be careful because they may cheat on you or they may you know just spend more time outside the house or ignore you even more if you really want their attention you're not going to get it being a gray rock uh, and there's another price and that is that you might start going numb to your own feelings you might just start shutting down and just uh ignore your needs ignore your feelings because you're putting on this act you might then take on this role and you know forget about your needs and feelings i become over identified become a gray rock actually yourself not right. just for display but to your own self right, so right. that's you don't want to do that you want to keep your aliveness inside so i'm sure and i'm certain that you spoke to a lot of victims right. survivors mm -hmm. um, do you get anywhere um talking to covert narcissists themselves do they come to me for therapy? yeah have you yeah oh, they, they usually don't want therapy <laughs> yeah sometimes they'll go as a last ditch effort to uh to try to salvage uh you know the likelihood of divorce but it's usually just to get back when they go to therapy and there's some that do go to therapy actually but um when they do they want it's because they're starting to lose their power or their self-esteem maybe their business is failing or their a divorce is threatened or they went through a divorce and they want to now get back their self-esteem and their power so that's what they want to talk about how can i get back to being the most important powerful person they're not usually looking at what did i do wrong you know how can i change it's like how can i get this person to you know want me back or how can i regain my respect so that's a different point of view i mean a lot of people go to therapy and they want to uh, get back to feeling good but some people most people usually are starting to see that they may have a problem and they want to try to help themselves to improve so you have to be with a narcissist in therapy for a while to to get them to realize their behavior is causing what they don't like and that's also the theme of my book is having uh the narcissist experience the consequence of their behavior in fact that's the way that you get alcoholics or addicts to change rather than enabling them they hit bottom when they see that they are actually the problem because there's a lot of denial with an addict as there is with a narcissist so and i uh, explain and have steps and scripts and how to engage in i call it transactional communication you want to communicate in a way with them it's not necessarily you don't want to complain you don't want to argue you don't want to plead you don't want to blame the very thin skin especially the covert they have the thinnest skin of all um, you don't want anything that you tell them they did wrong they're going to be defensive because they can't tolerate criticism so you have to communicate in a way that they think they're getting what they want <laughs> so it's it's different than somebody else in a normal relationship you'd say look when you did that it hurt my feelings and then your partner would be sympathetic well a narcissist doesn't care about your feelings they the last thing they want to talk about is feelings they don't want to be vulnerable they don't want to show any weakness or fear or flaws they want to imagine that they're perfect and um that they are in control basically so you have to communicate in a way that shows them that they'll get what they want if they talk to you in a different way or that it's a two-way street that you have to get your needs met too and i've seen 
you know, my clients see a lot of changes in the relationship. And then you can ascertain and evaluate whether your partner is amenable to change, whether there's a better prognosis. Often my clients then bring their partner into couples therapy and they can work on the relationship that way. Mm. So if this person is uh, violating the law and uh, seriously um, very a malignant narcissist but where they're very uh, cruel and take no responsibility, there's less likelihood of change there with someone who's more extreme. But there's like nine symptoms. There's three that are essential and you have to have five out of the nine to be have narcissistic personality disorder. So you could have maybe just the basic five and just be mild. So you could have a lesser degree of narcissism. And so the person, and maybe you're more introspective. So you're willing to look at yourself and, and think about things. Some narcissists will actually apologize, believe it or not, and, and look at their behavior. So it's on a spectrum, just like all mental illness. Oh, wow. You know, every time I talk to a therapist or a coach or a psychologist or whoever, I always learn something new, and I sure learned something new today. So I was wondering, could you tell us about where to order the book and yeah. any information about that you could share? Sure. Well, it's a uh, paperback. And anyway, it's on Amazon. It's in some bookstores. Or you can go to a bookstore and ask them to order it. Um, Barnes Noble has it. And you can also get an audio book on Google Play. You can get a PDF of it on my website, what is codependency.com. And I have tons of articles and uh, interviews and podcasts and things on relationships and narcissism and codependency, often codependents end up in relationships with narcissists. Um, so it's available, it's widely available. You can also get uh, on a digital book on Amazon or uh, Smashwords, uh, Google Play, other other outlets, Apple Books. So fabulous, fabulous. You're also hooked on into my website. People can find you uh, right on the front. Oh, great! Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the one thing about the, um, I feel sorry for for people who are in, involved with a, a covert narcissist because even though the grandiose, you know, exhibitionist narcissist can be obnoxious um, and they can be uh, cruel and entitled. The, the covert narcissist, I think, is even harder to live with because they're more neurotic, they're more emotional, um, and they're just like very morose. They get, they're very passive aggressive often. And all narcissists are manipulative, but they really play on your sympathies and they can act. Uh, they have a lot of self-pity and play the victim. And what happens is a lot of partners end up trying, wanting to rescue them and help them. And they get caught up in this cycle and there's no way you can help them because, you know, they have a disorder and their needs are, and they don't take any responsibility for themselves. The problem is always other people or they're not getting enough appreciation or recognition or whatever. And so it's an endless cycle and you and partners end up feeling drained and um, resentful and and exploited and it's hard to leave them because they keep coming back and then they'll blame you for leaving them and it's an endless cycle they're like a parasite kind of yeah yeah it's just so hard to hear this from me <laughs> um gosh i think we covered it all Okay. Thank you for inviting me to uh, share on the topic. My pleasure. My pleasure indeed. Thank you so much for being here.